Welcome to my unboxing of the Sim Raceway S1. Now you might not recognize the brand Sim Raceway when it comes to gaming peripherals. However, you'll probably recognize this one. So co-developed with Steel Series. This is a racing wheel that uses motion control rather than actually being like fixed to an object like a table or like a huge chair setup. So it uses motion control and the hugest variety of buttons that I think I've ever seen on a controller to give you a sim type feel and sim type flexibility and customization without being bolted down literally to a fixed furniture object and without taking up a ton of space in your home. So motion controlled, customizable driving experience, steering shift and pedal controls all in your hands. Let's go ahead and see what else they have to say for themselves. Quick rotary dials for driving aids. Realistic racing wheel shifters, cool, okay. Responsive RPM slash shift indicator lights. Customizable steering sensitivity, rubberized racing wheel comfort grips, and fully programmable 15 buttons and D-pad. All right, so full range throttle and brake controls and a high accuracy handheld motion controlled steering package co-developed with SteelSeries. So it includes Sim Raceway the game. However, saying it includes Sim Raceway the game is kind of like saying that it includes oxygen because Sim Raceway is actually free to play, which is pretty cool. Um, online world focused on live multiplayer racing, free to play, no subscription fee, simulation grade driving physics, laser scan tracks, and proprietary skill matching technology for closer racing across all skill levels. That can be a huge problem with racing games if you have that like super Super legit player that just sort of destroys everyone else. It's not really fun to race when you're actually alone on the track and you have no chance of catching up to anyone or anyone catching up to you. That's just boring. Um, oh, it also comes with $10 of in-game currency. So yes, it's free to play, but micro microtransaction driven. So you can buy like cars and stuff. Cool. Okay. My understanding is people who like racing games like, you know, driving the cool car in the racing game and, you know, that sort of thing. So I'm not much of a racing game guy myself, so, so don't get me wrong. Although I shouldn't really call it, I shouldn't really call it a game outright because Sim Raceway is not, uh, it's more of a sim than a game. So games tend to have more of an arcadey style of physics where it's not realistic, but it might be easier or, or more fun for, for novices, whereas sims tend to be more realistic. So it's easier to do things like spin out and crash. But uh, if you actually wanted to, uh, to practice, I mean, some sims even are used by professional drivers to practice a new, a new track that they haven't, uh, that they haven't done before. Uh, so if you want a more realistic driving experience, then you definitely want to go with something that uses realistic physics. And if I could get this package open, I would be some kind of a hero man, because this is unbelievable. Um, oh, it should be noted though, that just because it's compatible and comes with Sim Raceway and comes with $10 of in-game money, it is actually compatible with any other PC racing game as well. So they list a bunch of them on the website that it is specifically compatible with, but then at the end it just says, also, all PC racing games. So that is totally never going back in that packaging. That much is very clear. Uh, what do we got here? Long periods of repetitive motion using an improperly set up workspace. Oh, there's your SRW currency. Cool. Okay. And also seems to come with a small instruction guide. That's very eco-friendly. You know, small instruction guide. So you can tell they didn't cheap out on the instruction guide because it's printed in color, but that they didn't want to, you know, overdo the paper. We have dispensed with discs to save the planet. That's right. Don't bother throwing away the CD. It doesn't come with one. You can just download the latest off of, haha, simraceway.com slash download underscore client. There you go. Getting started guide and blah, blah, blah. Ah, this, that's what we want. So this shows what all of the buttons are for by default and what they actually do. This talks a little bit about the steering wheel. Oh, the yeah, steering wheel allows you to fine tune Sim Raceway's driving aids in order to suit your preferences. So to so change the value of an asset, assist, select using the assist dial and then turn the assist values dial to your desired setting, low, medium, high, or off. To turn all the assists off, select all on the uh, assist dial and turn the assist values dial to off. Very, very cool. Please note that once you've been turned off, they can only be turned back on individually. So assists, driving assists, you got all kinds of different things. Uh, oh, that's some pieces of the uh, red packaging. <laughs> okay, so spin, stab, shift, clutch, ABS, brake, traction, steer, pit, invault, lock, and all. So lock would probably be what you'd want to have it on after you've set everything. So basically if you go, okay, 
I want clutch assists to be high. So you set it all like that. Very cool. So I'm going to turn that off by default. And uh, okay, so here's our shifters. Here's our presumably throttle and brake. But give me a sec, guys. All right, so I was right, which is a miracle because, like I said, not really into racing games. So this is shift up, shift down. This is your brake. This is your throttle. So these are all actually easy to reach, even for someone like me with relatively small hands. However, once you're on these, I don't know that you'd, you know, I don't, I don't know that you'd necessarily be able to reach everything. So you can see, my thumbs can just barely make it to the paddle and then just barely make it to some of these. However, most of this stuff you shouldn't really have to use in-game. So let's have a look at what all the buttons are. So the conveniently located buttons that I will realistically be able to press... No, I can't reach that one. Can't reach that one. That I'll realistically be able to press with my fingers on the paddles, shifting and braking and... are look right and look left. So that's... yeah, okay, that's pretty... that's pretty basic. Um, the stuff that I realistically wouldn't be able to reach, but most people probably could, are things like speed limiter and request pit. Uh, it should be noted that things like speed limiter, so this is for when you're in the pits, are not necessarily available on all cars, but because this is a racing accessory, it does have the, uh, it does accommodate uh, some special options that aren't available on all cars, like launch control, which gets you off the line if the car supports it, and boost, which it boosts your speed if the car supports it, so so things like that. So uh, if you have larger hands than me, remember guys, my hands are super small, then you should realistically be able to reach this, probably this. Uh, you should be able to reach boost as well as lights. I just can't quite make it there. So what else do we have? So we got look back, rear brake balance, front brake balance, launch control, which we covered, HUD, which I think is fairly self-explanatory, shows you the HUD or doesn't show you the HUD, horn, uh, this one. Now this button actually has very cool functionality. What it does is it makes it so that the car will actually lift off the ground and then it does like a complete rotation and then it will flip the wheels from the top of the car down to the bottom, like from the bottom of the car down to the top of the car, like transformer style, and it will go along the road like no actually it just honks the horn so that honks the horn um this is for navigating menus so you got like enter select uh your d-pad as well as your back button so you can actually i mean that's one of the biggest frustrations with the uh, with most racing wheels uh well the only real racing wheel that i've really used in the past g25 was that you actually still have to have a keyboard handy for a lot of games because you can't navigate anything um but bearing in mind i didn't have the uh the shifter plugged in so I think that has navigation buttons on it but there's a lot of accessories to plug in whereas this is just one piece that you can like store in your coffee table and not you know worry about it being in the way all the time right okay uh camera view changes all of that stuff aha so steering sensitivity you can change it anywhere from 180 degrees to 360 degrees and then this we have already covered. So let's see what else Steel Series has to say for themselves here. Like I said, guys, I am not a racing aficionado. So this is um, something I do need a little bit. Oh, actually, no, wait, come back. This is cool. So the rubberized grips here are awesome. These are, these are like the stickiest rubber grips ever without feeling like it's sticky. You know how sometimes you're just like, oh, it feels like, um, you know, silly putty. Uh, it's not like that. They feel very, very nice. Very, it would be very difficult to accidentally drop this controller. The rest of the unit has like a soft touch feel, which is also very nice. It has a braided cord. We should have a look at how long the cord is, actually. That could be relevant. So you're not going to be plugging this in from, you know, a super long way away. It looks like about a Linus arm span and a half, which for those of you who work with real measurements is probably about 10 feet. Okay, or three meters, for those of you who use like real, real measurements, like not imperial measurements. Um, so ready, set, race. Okay, full range. You can, okay, you can change it. You can, yeah. Okay, I would definitely recommend going to steelseries.com and having a look at what they have to say about it because the unit itself feels very solid without being too heavy. And this gives you some idea of all of the customizability that is available. Here's a quick list of a bunch of games that support it. Dirt, Dirt 2, GTR, li uh, Live for Speed. Never heard of that. Need for Speed. I've definitely heard of that one. It's very mainstream. Um, used by the pros. Interesting. Tested and improved by professional racing drivers, including Dario French... Chitty? Wow. That's kind of cool. I mean, it's one thing when there's like a mouse that's like approved by pro gamers, but when there, you have like a wheel that's approved by pro drivers who like actually have to like 
risk their lives to do what they're doing and they say it's okay, then that's uh, sort of meaningful actually. For a neutral setup, okay, you can compromise between this and this, so... I think the point of all of this is the convenience factor, so not having the bulky setup, the customizability factor, kind of neat. I mean, it's a lot better than holding like a Wiimote. So the PC is still light years ahead of consoles in terms of that. The one drawback from my mind is a lack of force feedback. So personally, I like I have a hard time with racing games already. If I don't have force feedback, I have a much harder time with racing games. However, if you just want, yeah, if you just want the convenience factor, if you don't care about the force feedback and you want something that you can just kind of pack up and take with you somewhere very conveniently, then this might be the way to go. So thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the S1 from Steel Series, uh, the Sim Raceway branded S1. Don't forget to subscribe to Lines Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.